Welcome to Main Street Living. This program offers you the opportunity to participate in a worship service led by pastors and congregations of the Lutheran Church Missouri Senate from your surrounding area. On today's program... My friends, the good news of the gospel is God is gracious toward you, toward me. It's simply who He is. He is the master in our text who went out and found us by His grace. He saved us by grace alone. Using the means of His Word, He made His grace known to us, offering us more than a denarius, but eternal salvation. The service will begin after this opening hymn. Good morning. I'm Pastor Lawson Short from St. Peter Lutheran Church in North Bend, Nebraska. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God who is faithful and just will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us confess our sins to God, our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean, and that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us. And for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. May the Lord who has begun this good work in us bring it to completion in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Our epistle lesson is written in 1 Corinthians chapters 9 and 10. Do you not know that in a race all the runners compete, but only one receives the prize? So run that you may obtain it. Every athlete exercises self-control in all things, they do it to receive a perishable wreath, but we an imperishable. So I do not run aimlessly, I do not box as one beating the air, but I discipline my body and keep it under control, lest after preaching to others I myself should be disqualified. I want you to know, brothers, that our fathers were all under the cloud and all passed through the sea, and all were baptized in Moses in the cloud and in the sea, and all ate the same spiritual food, and all drank the same spiritual drink. For they drank from the spiritual rock that followed them, and the rock was Christ. Nevertheless, with most of them God was not pleased, for they were overthrown in the wilderness. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew chapter 20. 
Jesus said, The kingdom of heaven is like a master of a house who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with the laborers for a denarius a day, he sent them into his vineyard. And going out about the third hour, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace. And and to them he said, You go into the vineyard too, and whatever is right I will give you. So they went. Going out again about the sixth hour and the ninth hour, he did the same. And about the eleventh hour he went out and found others standing. And he said to them, Why do you stand here idle all day? They said to him, Because no one has hired us. He said to them, You go into the vineyard too. And when evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his foreman, Call the laborers and pay them their wages, beginning with the last up to the first. And when those hired about the eleventh hour came, each one, each of them received a denarius. Now when those hired first came, they thought they would receive more, but each of them also received a denarius. And on receiving it, they grumbled at the master of the house, saying, These last worked only an hour, and you have made them equal to us who have borne the burden of the day and the scorching heat. But he replied to one of them, Friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for a denarius? Take what belongs to you and go. I choose to give to this last worker as I give to you. Am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me? Or do you begrudge my generosity? So the last will be first, and the first last. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We continue by confessing our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
Grace to you and peace from God the Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The text for my message today is from Matthew chapter 20, verses 1 through 16. About seven or eight years ago now, a TV series came out called The Last Man on Earth. The show is a comedy about a man who found himself living in a world where everyone else had disappeared, was gone. And as the show follows this man, he travels around all around America and he has a good time doing whatever he wants. But he is a man struggling with loneliness and having to come to grips with the fact that he is probably the last human being alive. But then a miracle happens. A woman shows up. Now, she's not the prettiest of women he's ever seen, though that's not to say that she is ugly by any means. And he and her, they get along well, but not perfectly. But oh, how much better life was with her than by himself. How happy they were together. And so they got married. As long as he thought she was the only woman alive, he was happy with her. But guess what happened next in the show? Right after they get married, that very day, him and his bride run into January Jones, the model and movie star. When his wife was the only woman on earth, he and her, this man and his wife, they were happy and found joy in one another. Only when someone else showed up did he begin to be unsatisfied and jealous. My friends, this is a good picture for how we sinful human beings view God's grace often. For our God is a gift-giving God. All that we have in our life, our clothing, our shoes, Food, drink, house, home, job, spouse, kids, body and soul, everything. And above all, the forgiveness of sins. These are all gifts given from God by grace. When we look at these alone and His grace toward us, how joyful we are. When sin rears His ugly head, though, is when we start looking at others receiving what we think is more from God. We forget so easily how much God has really given to us and how much we don't deserve it. My friends, think of our text for today. Remember what we heard from St. Matthew. The kingdom of heaven is like a master of a house who went out early in the morning to hire laborers. And after agreeing with the laborers for a denarius a day, he sent them into his vineyard. So the text tells us. You see, these day laborers in our parable of Jesus, they didn't have a steady job. They needed some way to, somebody to employ them so they could put food on the table. Anyone who has ever lost a job or has had trouble finding a job knows how great a gift a good job is. But think of our text. These guys in our text... They didn't find a job. It was put before them on a silver platter. Instead of them going to seek out the master, the master sought these men out. And the master offered them all a denarius, a day's wage back then, for a day's work. It was a good job. It was a good pay. These men didn't do anything to get the job. They didn't need to show qualifications. It was simply offered to them all by the good graces of the Master. And so, my friends, you see, the Master in our parable, He is good. He is so good that He went out again and again at the third hour, the sixth hour, the ninth hour, even the eleventh hour. Back when the workday was a twelve-hour day. He kept going again and again to see if more workers needed work. He wanted to help out as many workers as he could. He wanted to make sure that if any worker wanted to put food on the table for his family, that he could. He did all this and he didn't have to. 
He didn't have to go out again and again. He didn't have to offer a job or pay that much. He did so because he wanted to. He did so because he is simply good. And so all were happy and all should have been happy. They all could go home and put food on the table. And the master remained faithful to the promise he made to every single one of them. He paid them all fairly. But then we come to that part of the parable and we see that some were angry with the master and we ask why. Well, when it came to pay time, you see, the workers who had came out first, who were sweaty and tired from working all day in the hot sun, they saw they got paid just as much as those who had only done an hour's worth of work. <clears throat> because of this, they got jealous. They got jealous because they stopped thinking in terms of the grace of the master, but in terms of fairness. They forgot how they didn't have a job at all that morning and how they wouldn't have had anything unless the master had went out, found them, and offered them a job. They forgot all about his grace. And that's what filled them with thoughts of what they deserved. <clears throat> My friends, so it is with us. When the Christian husband and wife consider their spouse as the best and only man or woman on earth, how happy both of them are. How happy they are with the gift that God has given to them. It's when the eye wanders and starts looking around that jealousy and lust are riled up in man's heart. Same is true with our job, our family, our health, our wealth. We're happy with what we have and we look at what we have, but then we look at someone else and they seem we have more. Look across the street. Grass always looks greener. And the sin in our hearts causes us to begrudge God's generosity. And even more so, my friends, think about this. How happy the Christian is when we see our sin, how deep and great it is, and we hear the wonderful words of absolution that we are forgiven. How happy we are when we see that God saves us completely by grace, and that causes us to fervently fight the good fight of the faith, as we heard Paul talk about in our epistle. But again, the temptations we face as Christians is when we see that person who lived a life of sin and was saved at the 11th hour, and so then the temptation we face is to get apathetic, about Jesus, about His Word, thinking that we can get more serious later. In this way, our situation is like this. Imagine a person went out to those first workers and said, hey, the Master is so gracious that He's going to hire workers even at the 11th hour and pay them a denarius too, just like you guys. Imagine that, how that would affect work ethic, about those trying to get serious only later. My friends, so that we might not put God to the test, nor begrudge His generosity, so that we might not reject His grace and lose it, we must understand that when it comes to grace, there's a starting point, and the starting point is that I don't deserve it. Grace, that's the very definition of grace. Grace, by its very definition, is getting those good gifts of God we don't deserve. It's, grace is the opposite of words like fair or deserve. What is fair? What we deserve. Well, the law shows us, well, what we deserve nothing that we have. We don't deserve clothing, shoes, food, drink. We don't deserve any things. What we deserve is punishment for the times we have sinned. It shows that we deserve God's judgment upon the times that we have been jealous of our neighbor. My friends, the starting point of grace is first to understand what we truly deserve. And even more so, understand 
that God doesn't deal with us as we deserve, but He deals with us through His Son, Jesus Christ. When we truly understand what grace is, the light of God's love shines upon our hearts more beautiful and glorious than anything in this world. Once we understand that God has given His grace to us freely, this this moves our very hearts and souls. We come to truly know how great our Master's grace is. For in Jesus we see the truth that grace is not fair. It wasn't fair what happened to Jesus on the cross. When Jesus went to the cross suffering for you and for me, He didn't deserve it. He didn't deserve to die in humility. He didn't deserve to have the wrath of God poured on Him, but because of His great love for you and for me, Jesus gave up all He had that we might have all that we have, including and most especially the forgiveness of sins. And more. My friends, the good news of the gospel is God is gracious toward you, toward me. It's simply who He is. He is the Master in our text who went out and found us by His grace. He saved us by grace alone. Using the means of His word, He made His grace known to us, offering us more than a denarius, but eternal salvation. Through baptism, He offered to us more than just a day job, but new life in the kingdom of God as His children. Through Holy Communion, we eat something better than money can buy, but we eat the very bread and wine of Christ's body and blood and receive His life. And are joined to Him in a glorious way we cannot fully understand. So my friends, we have a gracious gift-giving God. And for us who have received that good news, received the gospel, that our sins have all been forgiven through word and sacrament, this has a profound change on our lives. It changes how we see everything. It changes how the way I see my spouse. To look at my spouse through the lens of God's grace is to see them as the only person on earth for me. God gave this person specifically to me and for me to love and to cherish. What a gift. It means I see my job, whatever that might be in my life, as a gift that I don't deserve, but one given by His grace. Clothing, food, shoes, drink, house, home, family, All of these, and especially that I'm a forgiven child of God, this is an undeserved gift. And when we see life through that lens, God's grace, how much joy does that not bring to our lives? That's what causes the Christian to rejoice always in all circumstances. It means we go about our life looking around, seeing God's grace everywhere. And that way, God's grace doesn't just stay in church. It starts in word and sacrament. But it goes out into our daily lives. It makes us joyous in all things. Whatever troubles or trials we might be, we know we have a gracious God. And so, my friends, as we prepare to enter the season of Lent, let us live humbly by grace. Let's remember, we don't deserve God's grace. But let us remember, we have received God's grace, full and free. May God continue to bless us in such grace. Amen. And may now the peace of God which surpasses all understanding keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Let us pray the prayer Jesus has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look on you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. Thank you for viewing Main Street Living this morning. Our hope is that you have been blessed and encouraged by this presentation. If you are able to attend local services, I would like to invite you to worship with our congregation. If you're in the North Bend area, please join us at St. Peter Lutheran Sunday mornings at 9 a.m. More information about this program can be found at MainStreetLiving.com. Thank you again for joining us today and have a blessed week. We hope to see you again at the same time next Sunday on this station.